Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never practice nunchucks in a crowded room. Never eat chole before a road trip. Always take your shirt off before you iron it. Don't take a call near a swimming pool. And don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully. Five generals, resplendent in their full ceremonial dress, sat at the table glowering at the war hero who sat before them. Five years earlier, in 1971, Major General Tajammal Hussain had held off superior Indian forces at Hilli in East Pakistan. Then, denied promotion, General Hussain decided to turn his guns on the inquisitors who had now gathered to judge him. Army Chief Muhammad Ziaul Haq, Zia's spy master, Lieutenant General Ghulam Jilani, and Lieutenant General Sarwar Hassan Khan, Faiz Chishti, and Gul Hassan. Less than a week later, Tajamul was thrown out of the army. Letters were sent out to garrisons across the country. Tajamul wrote in his memoirs, letting troops know that he had been plotting to overthrow the government, which was led by Prime Minister Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, and to replace it with an Islamic state. Fantastic, Zia growled. He was perhaps unaware that he himself would hang the Prime Minister and begin serving the will of God with public amputations and floggings not very many months later. The arrest and coming court-martial of former ISI chief Lieutenant General Faiz Hamid announced this week is intended to crush former Prime Minister Imran Khan's supporters inside the military. Two officers active on social media in Imran's support, Major Adil Farooq Raja and Captain Heather Raza Mehdi, have already been handed down sentences. Four other senior officers are believed to have been arrested. Figures like Khadija Shah, granddaughter to former army chief Asif Nawaz Janjua, have spent months in jail. Tajammul's failed coup reminds us that elements within the military have repeatedly sought to overthrow or undermine the state and their own commanders. Losing lives every week in an unwinnable war in the country's northwest, the economic lives of their family and kin and communities in ruins, and the unchecked power of a corrupt elite. The rank and file of the Pakistan army is showing signs of deep alienation, eminent scholar Aisha Siddiqa notes. Fez's trial is meant to serve as a demonstration of the army chief's complete authority over the institution. But it could only too easily prove a dangerous gamble. Like so much else to do with the Pakistan Army's power struggles, the story of Faiz's downfall has to do with mud, which the military has learned how to transform into gold through the dark arts. In 2004, journalist Marvi Sinmad reported that property magnate Iftikar Ali Wakar, together with his sister Zahida Aslam, put up the cash to build the top city housing project in Rawalpindi. Zahida and Iftikar soon fell out though, and the brother ended up dying uh, of suicide. For all practical purposes, control of the project ended up with her manager, Kumar Moiz. In 2014, Moiz found himself called on to aid the campaign of Tahirul Qadri, a military-backed cleric who played a key role in destabilizing then Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's government. He also became involved with Haider Abbas Rizvi, a Muhajir Qaumi movement leader who was at the time acting as a mediator between the government, the military and Imran. Likely, Moise's political contacts greets the path of top city growth from the outset. The Auditor General of Pakistan discovered organized wrongdoing to aid its profitability. Land sold for the project, among other things, had been undervalued. Permission had been given to build shops in residential uh, buildings and apartment blocks had been sanctioned excess of the uh, land usage regulation norms. 
Ties to the MQM party were adroitly used by Moise's business rivals to seize a share of the project. In 2017, allegedly on General Faiz's orders, personnel from the ISI and the Pakistan Rangers raided top city's offices and confiscated jewellery and cash from Moise's home. According to the businessman, he was only released from illegal custody when he handed over a part of his properties to nominees of Najaf Hamid, uh, who is Fez Hamid's brother and a low-level bureaucrat. Fez isn't the only one of Imran's military commanders to face corruption allegations. General Kamar Javed Bajwa, the former army chief and Fez's one-time boss, has been accused of accumulating an estimated $56 million in property through his six years in office. Though some of that wealth came from land to which the general was entitled as part of his uh, career perks, uh, his relative and retainer Sabir Mithu Hamid is accused of coercing landowners to sell land in areas where major projects were to be developed. Hamid is now being investigated by the Federal Anti-Corruption Agency on money laundering charges uh, which could conceivably lead to General Bajwa himself. For months now, General Asim's frustration at not being able to crush Imran has been increasingly evident. Imran and his wife Bushra Bibi have succeeded in gaining bail in a series of graft cases, efforts to prosecute them for violating religious laws governing their marriage also collapsed. To make things even worse for General Asim, the Supreme Court ordered that Imran's Tehreek-e Insaf party be given a share of reserved seats in the legislature, enhancing its political presence and heft. Last week, Bilawal Bhutto, the head of the Pakistan People's Party, bitterly complained of pro-Imran judicial bias. There's little doubt efforts have been made to bulldoze that supposed bias away. In March, six judges of the Islamabad High Court complained that the ISI had used kidnapping, torture, secret video surveillance in an effort to secure their compliant compliance in cases against Imran. Pretty amazing stuff. Even these crude tactics, though, didn't succeed in scaring the judiciary and capturing them as prisoners of war. Fez's prosecution potentially offers a means to prosecute Imran before a military court, but it's far from clear how the increasingly assertive civilian court system might treat such a development. The Supreme Court had, last year, stopped the trial of Imran supporters alleged to have been involved in violence after his arrest, uh, in military courts, laying down clear principles for these things. And it, we, we, we don't know if judges will change course. Even if General Asim fails to draw Imran into the military justice system though, he could benefit by projecting himself as a crusader against corruption. Endemic corruption in the officer corps has caused deep resentment in the ranks, but action against any of these figures has been rare. Lieutenant General Obedullah Khattak, the former Inspector General of Arms and Major General Ejaz Shahid were dismissed from service in 2016 after a court of inquiry on the charge of misappropriating funds during their tenures uh, within Balochistan. There were, however, no prison sentences handed down. The Pakistan National Assembly had earlier indicted Lieutenant General Javed Ashraf uh, Kazi a uh, former spy master who went on to become railway minister uh, on corruption charges related to contracts for the construction of Pakistan's railway system. Together with Lieutenant General Saeedu Zafar, General Kazi was accused of handing over railway land to a Malaysian conglomerate without engaging in various kinds of proper diligence. The case is still underway with no prospects of early resolution. Too much pressure against Imran and his military allies, though, could end up opening or deepening the fault lines of class and ideology inside the armed forces. Following early meetings with the Islamist politician Abul Ala Maududi, 
the founder of the Jamaat e Islami. The village bond Tajamul rejected the colonial heritage of the armed forces. To become a good officer, he later wrote, one was expected to drink, dance, and even speak the Urdu language with an English accent, he recorded in his memoirs. The sooner one adjusted oneself to complete European ways of life, the better one's chances were to be, uh, to be regarded as a good officer. And Tajamul was the first of many to strike seeking an Islamic state. Anyone who talked about religion, Tajamul, concerned, uh, Tajamul wrote, was considered to be a backward type and sometimes even ridiculed in public. Following his first coup attempt in 1976, Tajamul again planned to install an uh, Islamic government by assassinating General Zia Ullak at the Pakistan Day Parade in 1980, scholar Shuja Nawaz records. Islamist coup plots like these have actually been a pretty common feature of the life of the Pakistan army. Led by Brigadier F.B. Ali, officers sought to overthrow the government in 1972-1973, believing the, that uh, the government's un-Islamic ways and General Yahya Khan's drinking had led to the loss of East Pakistan or what became Bangladesh. Then in 1995, a group of 40 officers led by General Zaheer ul Islam Abbasi, Brigadier Muntasir Billah and Colonel Azad Minhas uh, plotted to assassinate Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto uh, as well as the senior military leadership. The army, Nawaz writes, refused to face the reality that the army officer corps was increasingly coming from urban centres where there was a strong Islamist current and that the army's own population, after all, mirrored the increasingly conservative bent of the country's general population. Like his predecessors, General Asim confronts the millenarian impulses represented today by Imran Khan, the promise of a just Islam-based state. To his ranks of supporters in and outside the army, the Prime Minister at least represents an illusion of an equitable, fair Pakistan, free from corrupt military officers and predatory politicians. Lacking any political strategy for bringing about comprehensive economic and social change, struggling in the midst of economic gridlock and an insurgency, General Asim is seeking to break his opponents at the wheel. But it is far from clear that he can, if he can succeed, no matter how well he plays his game of cards. I'm Praveen Swami and I'm a contributing editor with The Print. Thank you for watching this episode of Security Code.